So guys what if Naruto was become husband of Elmenhilda Karnstein movie? I never imagined that my life would turn out like this, a young man said as he looks at the mirror to see himself and think a good number of things over. He was around late teens, 18 to precise, with spiky yellow blonde hair and three whisker marks on each cheek, while his eyes were blue, he wore a white shirt and black shorts, having changed his clothes after finding out he was sleeping in formal wear that had a hole in it from something that happened not too long ago, and that it was close to 7 a.m. in the morning, this was Naruto Uzumaki or Issei Hiyoto, it's hard to tell now, but let's go back a bit to explain a few things. It started when Issei was killed by his date, the fallen angel named Rainer, and was left to die in the park, he would have died, but that was put on hold thanks to a soul entering his body and having a new person take over, power swap more like it, the soul belongs to one and only, Naruto Uzumaki, the hero of the fourth ninja war. Naruto had won the war, but Zetsu used unstable Kamui and transported the blonde into the dimensional void, it nearly killed the blonde as his body was destroyed, but not his soul and spirit, because of that, his soul later exited out of the void and enter a new person, who was on death's door, which being in full circle now, he had entered the body of Issei and gained some things other things in the process. Such as his perverted nature, though luckily, he was better at keeping it in check than Issei was, oh, how shameful of this and death would come, but the blonde didn't give up and wanted to live, a wish that someone was more than willing to grant. Naruto couldn't remember who but was thankful of the person that saved him and felt some great power within him that mixes with his chakra, the only thing that he saw was the long beautiful red crimson hair of his savior and could guess that the person was a woman around his age, he will have to thank her when and if he sees her again. But moving to the main point, Naruto could still feel and sense his chakra within him, but it was different, and he felt weak because of the body he has, he could guess that the swap and combined of two beings, have some upsides and downsides. Like the upsides are, he can remember who he is from his past life and yes, the pervert, baka life as well that he is ashamed of, along with gaining his original appearance. Most likely due to Naruto being the stronger of the two, along with that, he could see from these memories that Issei had a good life with parents and some friends, especially one from childhood that he had a lot of fun with, causing a smile to form up on the young man's face, he also knows all about this world and has enough knowledge of it, to where Naruto won't have to worry about walking around and screaming when seeing something new, that will be bad and now the downsides. The downsides are that Naruto can't use his full chakra due to her new body being weak Ad will need to build himself up again after he finds out why his body feels different, also, he must be careful around his new parents as one mistake could bring trouble in the people at school which is another big problem. The ninja must go to school again. Oh boy, here we go again, this is going to be interesting. Time skip Naruto was right and lucky to avoid, dodge odd questions from the other students, they had asked some odd questions and they got simple quick answers as the blonde didn't want to deal with them, unfortunately, they also took the change in hair color and hairstyle, as well as the whisker marks on his face, as signs that he became a delinquent, which didn't help, given the reputation Issei gained as a member of the perverted trio. Naruto was now walking down the street as it was late at night and decided to get some training in, as this pervert's body was weak as hell. However, to Naruto's surprise, all the weapons he got from his old world came with him, so that's great news, and he also has the eternal Mangekio Sharingan that he somehow got from Madara as well, he had a long way in training due the new body and still wonder who saved from death, he will need thank that person who saved and get some answer. Though, all of Naruto's thinking came to a stop as he spotted a man wearing a trench coat with a black fedora on his head, this person was giving off some bad vibes to him. Well, what do we have here? A stray wondering by itself, the fedora guy said. What the are you talking about? Naruto demand, getting ready for a fight. My name is Donisik, but it won't matter since you're going to die anyway, the fedora guy or now Donisik said, before making a light spear and release his black wings before charging at Naruto. Naruto dodged Donisik and used a chakra enhance kick, he kicked the crow towards a tree as the said tree broke on impact from the man. Hum, not bad for a stray, Donisik said with a groan, before noticing that Naruto was breathing heavy and charged at his target again with his light spear raised in the air. Naruto mentally curse his luck, Issei, that damn stupid boy never trained in his life as he only thought of breasts, asses and harems, god, the boy would get along with his godfather well. Naruto needs to end this quick as he was low on energy and almost out of breath, he waited for the fool to come closer, when Donisik did and went for a downward slash, the blonde made his move and summon one of his swords, a cloud of smoke blocks the mon's vision, but he felt his light spear being blocked by something. The smoke cleared and Donisik saw a sword, 
but it wasn't any ordinary sword as this sword was large as it has downward facing scales that ran along the entirety of its length, up to the hilt with the base of which having a small skull. This is Samahata, the sword that was once wielded by Kisame Hoshigaki. The fallen angel was surprised as he heard the sword making noises and the scales moving. That's impossible. I've never heard a sentient sword. Donisik shouted in disbelief. Oh, Samahata is a living sword all right and it doesn't slash, it sherds. Naruto stated with a savage smile. Naruto knocked Donizik's light spear away and slashed diagonally, shredding the mon's trench coat and removing some flesh, the fallen angel screamed in pain at being cut. Naruto wasn't done as he delivered a left hook knocking out some teeth. Donizik glared at Naruto but knew he couldn't fight him as he had taken too much damage, he will make sure that the little brat pays for this. You'll regret this, you little shit, with that said, Donizik flew off in the night sky and left the area. Naruto sighed at this and put Samahata away, before sitting down to catch his breath. Damn it, that took a lot out from me, Naruto grasped and took some deep breaths for air. Naruto got right back up and went straight home, as he had school tomorrow, the first thing he will do on his day off is to get rid of all the hentai stuff that Issei has by throwing them in the trash or burning them. What Naruto didn't know, or notice, was that a little bat was in the sky, watching the events that took place. The bat flew back to report back to her master and what her newest member of her peerage has done. Time skip morning came. Naruto was back at Kuo Academy and it was the same as always, but he pulled through. When school ended, he was about to leave, but he stopped and noticed a girl around his age walking towards him. The said girl has bluish gray eyes and long blonde hair that reaches down toward her plump bubbly rear as her breasts were close to the same size as Rios. She was wearing the female Kuo uniform that all females wear but she was wearing black high thigh stockings with black garter straps connecting to them from inside of her skirt, this girl is Yumi Kiba and she goes by the title of Princess Knight in the school. Issei Hyoto? Yumi asked. Naruto decided to play along and said, yes, that's me. Yumi gave Naruto a beautiful smile, making him blush a little and spoke, President Rias wants to meet you. Naruto nodded his head and got up from his desk to go with her. They left the room with the other students thinking on what the hell just happened. As the two walked side by side, Naruto notices that everyone was looking at him and Yumi, but he also notices the boys staring at Yumi's ass and her swaying hips, this made him frown at them, sure he was a bit of a pervert in his past life thanks to Jiraiya's influence, and it didn't help that he gained Issei's perversion on top of it due to the merger, but at least he wasn't open about it and knew how to control his impulses. Soon enough, the pair finally made it to the orc building and entered the office, Naruto immediately took notice of the other females in the room thanks to the pervert's memories, he also saw that Sona and Tsubaki were here, also, he noticed that Rias sitting down at her desk and was looking at him with interest, while Sona was looking at him with a raised eyebrow. President, I brought him over like you asked, Yumi said, shutting the door and leaned against the wall. Thanks, Yumi, please have a seat Issei, Rias said with a smile on her face and looked at Naruto. I would rather stand, Naruto stated, looking for a way out, especially since he felt that he didn't want to be here for some reason, which Sona took notice of. Very well then, Sona and I have some questions that we'd like to ask, Rias said. Very well ask away, Naruto said, then who are you? Since you're not Issei as I can sense some chakra flowing through you, Sona questioned. Naruto noticed Kaneko stiffen when she heard chakra, making him frown at this, this made him wonder on what happened to her, but he won't push it for now. Before I answer that, were you the one that saved me? Naruto asked, seeing the same beautiful crimson hair that he saw before. Yes. I did, I brought you back to life with all eight of my pawns, known as evil pieces, to bring you back as a devil, Rias answered, before she told her new pawn about the three faction and what the evil pieces do, but to her surprise, he didn't look shock or surprise. Naruto was taking this quiet well due to his old home and encounters he faced. You're not surprised at this at all I see? Rias questioned. Naruto shrugged his shoulders and spoke, I am not since I've encountered demons, devils, demigod, goddess and other such beings in my old world. They looked at the teen like he grew a second head when he said, my old world and this made Naruto chuckled at this, the fox was out of the bag now, and there was no point in hiding it. Well my real name is Naruto Uzumaki, and I've swapped places with Issei Hyodo as his soul died and went to the afterlife and now, I take his place. The devils in the room were floored at this, and how can we tell that you're telling the truth? Sona asked which made sense given this was quite the bombshell, and the blonde had an idea to show his proof. Naruto made a shadow clone shocking the devils, as he can only make one for now, 
due to his new body and still need more training. You see, my people can use chakra, we're called ninja, and we use jutsus to help us to fight back, Naruto said, telling truth and saw no harm in explaining more to the devils as he is now a devil and had a feeling to trust them as they seem to be good people. Naruto decided to tell them his story, the history when the sage of six paths gave chakra to others, the wars, the tailed beasts, the villages, his life, the fourth ninja war, fighting a crazy goddess and how he got here, they all absorbed the info that were giving to them. To Rias, she was jumping with inner joy as she hit the jackpot, she found a way out of her marriage from the asshole named, Riser. That's a very interesting story Naruto, but I believe that you, being inside of Issei's body weakened you, as well, Sona said, causing Naruto to nod at her, answering her question, leading to Sona thinking of a plan to keep her friend's new peerage member safe for the time being. Then I think that one of our peerage members should escort you home, just in case the fallen came after you comes back with backup, Sona informed. A very good idea Sona, Rias stated and looked at her knight to say, Yumi can you escort Naruto back home for me? Of course, President, Yumi answered, Subaki, you go as well as having backup is a good idea. Sona asked her queen. Very well Sona, Subaki agreed. Naruto wanted to say something but didn't as they have a point, if he had his old body, then it would be no problem but with him having a weak body hell have some problems, soon enough, the three devils walked out of the room and building, heading toward his house where his parents are at home. Naruto thought on how did they get used to their son Issei, he will never know. When they got home his mom saw him bringing in two girls, thinking that he's having a threesome, Naruto told them that they're friends and he join a club that studies the supernatural, which made the two giggled at his reaction, but the two decided to stay for the night just in case the fallen angel or more attack his home. Little did Naruto know, the two snuck in his room naked as the day they were born and slept with him, nothing like that, but to use their healing magic to strengthen Naruto's body to help fast track him in regaining his strength, granted they couldn't get it done right of the bat, in one night, given how powerful he was in his old life, and his new life just got a little more interesting in the next morning. Time skipped the sun was over Kuo and showing a nice day, in the Hyodo house, Naruto was sleeping peacefully, he gripped something warm and soft thinking it was his pillow, but that's when he heard a feminine moan, his eyes snapped open as he jolted up from the bed and pulled the covers off as he notices both Yumi and Tsubaki were in his bed naked as the day they were born. How the did they sneak in? Naruto thought, but he notices that he was naked as well and remembers he was wearing shorts before bed. And when did they undress me? The young man thought with a questionable look on his face and knew that nothing had happened last night as he didn't smell anything off. Naruto then heard them groaning and saw their eyes opening due to the light of the sun, they smile at Naruto and caused him blush. Morning Naruto, Yumi greeted, getting up and stretched her arms over her head which made her breasts jiggled. Morning and what are you two down in my bed? And naked? Naruto greeted, asked, while trying, and failing, to not looking at the naked girls in his bed. Oh, the reason that we are naked is we need skin contact to use our healing magic, given your special circumstances, we can use it to strengthen your body to better handle your power, Tsubaki informed and then thought of an idea to tease the blonde. She grabbed Yumi's head and the two started to make out in front of Naruto. Naruto's eyebrow twitched at this, while under normal circumstances he would appreciate the sight before him. The last thing he needed was for his parents to walk in on this sight, coughing into his hand to get their attention, which it worked as the two were looking at him, but with lust and hunger, Tsubaki licking her lips slowly and the two girls liked the reaction, the blonde saw what they were looking at, being Naruto Jr., at full attention, he just figured out that he was getting his figure from his old world. Naruto covered himself up with a blanket, making the two girls pout, and said with a groan, not funny. The two giggled at his reaction, but they heard someone coming up the stairs and had no time to explain themselves. Issei it's time to get up, Mrs. Hyodo said as she opens her son's door, but notices the two girls are in her son's bed naked with him naked as well. I let you three be, she quickly said, closing the door and ran downstairs. The three devils then heard her screamed at her husband, Honey, honey something happened. What's wrong dear? Mr. Hyodo asked his wife, Issei was in bed with those two girls and they were all naked, she shouted. A, a threesome, he said in shock, Naruto sigh at this. While both Yumi and Tsubaki were giggling at this as the three started to get dressed for school. Breakfast was something as both parents were looking at them, but nothing was said as breakfast was short and the three left for Kuo Academy. All while Naruto discreetly made a shadow clone and ordered it to go back home to rewrite his parents' memories of this morning with the Sharingan, Naruto remembered their reaction to Issei just announcing that he had a girlfriend, 
so he really didn't want to deal with them thinking he had, much less a threesome. The three walked through the gates of the academy and Naruto heard the other students were talking about the three walking in together. I have to get back to Sona as she needs me to help her out with paperwork, Tsubaki said as she walked away. I'll pick you up after school to go to the orc building, Yumi said as she'd walked away. All right, Naruto said before looking up in the sky, he will need to ask his king a favor to avoid any more problems or future problems with his new life. This was his home and new life, he started to wonder how the others are doing. He also hopes that Kurama was alright as he never heard from the fox, but he still can feel his powers flowing through him and something else deep within him, the blonde will have to investigate that later, but now the first hour class was starting and here we go. Look out world, a new devil has come and will show everyone why he is the greatest ninja. Within Kuo Academy we can find our blonde hero enjoying his lunch in orc building and doing some reading on the supernatural, as he is a devil now and should learn anything he can about other beings. It has been two weeks now since coming to this world and things were turning around great for our hero. Naruto had asked a favor from both Rias and Sona that if they can make living here in this world better and change a few things around, they agreed as they didn't want anyone to question about the sudden and massive change of Issei, such as where he is as the blonde didn't know how long it will last. So, with that said, Rias and Sona had their peerage do a mass memory rewrite with them leading it, making it so everyone will think Naruto's appearance was what he looked like the whole time while having a certain vampire bishop hacking Issei's files, changing the name to Naruto Hyodo and replaced his image with Naruto's. This made things lot better and easier for Naruto to live in this new world and gain a good life, Issei's grades were straight C's, but the blonde changed that around and was now a B student, he was also good at gym and had a few girls trying to spy on him when he changed, but they didn't have much luck in doing so, and he had kept his locker locked so he won't have to worry about any pranks or anyone that steals his stuff, it never hurts to be careful. Naruto also was very well liked around at school, he has become friends with the kendo club as both he and Yumi sparred. Along with hanging out there and even clean the equipment, and, the blonde kicked, or hit, the shit out of the pervert duo with the kendo sticks, which earns great respect from girls at the school, that was fun, but moving on, he also hangs out with Sona and Tsubaki at the student council with some of other members to get to know his fellow devils at school and even played chess with the sea tree heiress, while he hasn't won yet, he's getting closer and two love their game. Now with the peerage in the orc club, Naruto has gotten along with them very well and formed good bonds with them during the two weeks, which caused him to smile and think back. For Rias Gremory, they built a good friendship, rather than just servant and master, they bonded over Rias' anime collection, when Naruto found out about it and didn't make fun of her, he asked if she could show him more, as he was new to it, especially since Issei's memories didn't have much about anime, manga, except for the eki kind, and it has got his attention. Naruto can see himself making various new techniques by using the ones from the various anime, manga he's seen and read. Rias was happy and had a lot of fun with Naruto, she took him to anime, manga stores and at lunch together on the weekends, or any day they can have, she even shared good information on devil culture with her new pawn, while Sona taught him the history, they had formed a good friendship and spend good amount of time with each other. For Akano Himejima, it was odd due to her teasing, flirting, and you get the idea, but Naruto made a great impression onto the queen and could tell she was kind person to hang out with, Naruto was fine with the teasing and would flirt back Akano, which sometimes would cause Rias to become jealous or mad for some reason, which the two loved to do. Akano even helped Naruto with learning and practicing on using demonic magi, as he was on his charka by himself, and needed to learn his other power, he had thanked Yumi and Tsubaki for strengthening his body in magic, charka network to help, it helped a lot. As for Kaneko Taju, Due to Kaneko's fear of chakra, it made it hard to hang out with her at first, it took some time, but the two had finally been able to talk to each other and enjoy their talks, the blonde would give the white-haired rook some sacks of sweats to enjoy during the talks, which made her very happy. One day, Kaneko had asked on why Naruto seemed carefree and alright on using chakra and senjutsu, along with how he can control it without going mad, Naruto told her that using senjutsu doesn't make a person fall into madness and was based on who the person is and how much training he or she put into to use senjutsu, good becomes great, bad becomes worse. Naruto had told Kaneko that he could tell that she had a history, maybe bad one with senjutsu, he wanted to help, but not now as she was not sure and didn't want to push her, Kaneko's respect and friendship with the blonde grew immensely that day. For Yumi Kiba, the two bonded very well with each other. Not just because of the mornings, but other things, Naruto and Yumi would hang out often together in classes, sometimes in lunch, spar with each other in the kendo club or test out their swords, and all of which was very fun. The blonde devil was happy with this new life and home he had grained, 
he will make sure this second chance won't be wasted and live it well. Naruto, our class is starting soon. Yumi called out, getting Naruto out of his train of thoughts as he gathered his stuff for class. Sure Yumi, I will be right behind you, Naruto said as he gathered up his books and put his supernatural books away. Naruto left the building and joined Yumi, who was smiling at him and the two walked towards their history class. Time skip once school was done and things were taken care of, the orc was gathered up and waiting for any calls from their contracts as devils gain power and points from doing jobs, so far no one has been summoned and that was good for now. Naruto sat on the sofa, reading his book while having four of his shadow clones reading and finishing schoolwork in another room, Kaneko and Yumi sat on the same sofa as Naruto, on different ends of him, and enjoyed the peace and quiet. While they were sitting, Yumi thought the perfect idea as she got up from the couch and decided to sit right on Naruto's lap, surprising him as he felt her butt grinding against his lower area to get a rise out of him. Really Yumi? Naruto said with a sigh, Yumi giggled at this and said, what your lap is more comfortable to sit on. She leans back at his chest and read the book he was reading. Naruto sighed yet again, as he can tell that both she and Tsubaki were now pretty much living with him. And his parents didn't care. The two were always sleeping in nude to help him with regaining his powers, but the two were getting bolder, as one time when they woke up together, Yumi pushed Tsubaki down and started to make out and grinding against each other, tempting Naruto to take them, but they got a cover placed over them as he got dressed, making the two pout then giggled as they knew he was just keeping his urges under control, making them like him even more. Era. Era it seems Naruto's beastly urges are out of control, what we should ever do. Maybe I can satisfy him. Akano asked in a dramatically way. Kaneko looked at her and muttered, perverted queen as she munched on the snacks that Naruto gave her. Rias then came in with a stack of papers in her hands, putting it on the table and sat down on the other sofa across from Naruto, but her eye twitched at seeing her knight sitting on Naruto's lap, also it didn't help that she and Tsubaki were now living with him. What's with the paper? Naruto asked. Well Naruto, you have to hand those out to others as they are flyers that humans use to summon us, so they can wish anything they want, Rias answered. Very well then, time for you to get up Yumi, Naruto said as he pokes Yumi's side. Yumi groaned, but she got up as Naruto got off the sofa and grabbed the stack of flyers and headed out the door. Once the blonde was gone, Rias then looked at Yumi as she sat down on Naruto's spot and asked a question on her mind, Okay Yumi, what's yours and Tsubaki goal? What are you talking about? Yumi said pretending to be confused. Rias' eyebrow twitched at this, Akano giggled at her friend and decided to tease her by saying, Era, is Rias jealous of Yumi that she and Tsubaki are so close to Naruto, that they living with him and may pop his v-card ladder down the road? Rias' face turned red as her hair and glared at her queen. Yumi laughed at this, but blushed as well, thinking about Naruto taking her and Tsubaki. Ai ai it's not like that, Rias shouted trying to defend herself. Is it? Akano said with a smile on her face and then giggled at Rias' pouty face. But you also forgot to tell him that we have a stray to hunt tonight. Oh, by the mouse, I forgot, Rias said as she sighed at this before speaking again, well call him back later today, but for now let him do his job first alright. Then she looked at Yumi with a huge smile on her face and spoke, so, how's your training going? Yumi looked at Rias and answered her, it's doing fine. I just can't believe that Naruto wants me to try to make different weapons from my sacred gear and make moves like Emiya or Chloe from the Fate series you both love so much. Rias was giddy all over seeing her knight trying to copy Emya and Chloe from the Fate series, she can't wait for Yumi to use them, if she faces Riser and his peerage. Time skip. Evening. Naruto was walking back to the orc building as he was done handing out all the flyers, most of them were teenage girls and older, that are in their twenties, he was thinking about Kurama as he still hasn't heard a word from him and was still figuring out that other power that he held within him was, but he didn't notice that he bumped into somebody. Ouch. A young female voice, Naruto looked on at the person he bumped into. But turned his head away quickly as he saw a pair of white panties as the girl ass was in sticking up in the air. The girl finally got up and Naruto really got a good look of her. She has long blonde hair that flows all the way down to her back, with split bangs over her forehead and a single strand sticking out from the top and sloping backward, she has green eyes as she was wearing dark teal nun outfit with light blue accents, a white veil over her head with light blue accents, a brown satchel slung on her right hip and brown boots with black straps in a X-shaped pattern as she was wearing a silver cross necklace around her neck. Sorry, I wasn't paying attention, Naruto said, the girl gave him a warm smile and said, it's alright I wasn't either since I am kind of lost. 
Naruto smile back and ask, so, where you're heading? As he laid back, he could tell this girl was a nun from the church, and that she is very innocent and pure. I am heading toward the church that's here, she said, tilting her head cutely and ask, do you know where it is mister? Naruto, Naruto Hyoto and you are? Naruto asked. I am Asia Argento, it's nice to meet you mister, Hyoto, Asia said. Please call me Naruto, since calling mister, makes me feel old, Naruto waved with smile on his face. Asia giggled at this and said, okay Naruto, and do you know where the church is in this town? Yes, I do, so, follow me Asia, Naruto said as he picked up her briefcase and started to carry it for her. Asia followed Naruto right by his side as they made it toward the church, the blonde devil felt on edge all of a sudden, not because of the holy power that was still coming from it, but he senses something foul and evil coming from inside of the building, but he played it off. Well here we are Asia, Naruto said to the nun, thank you very much, Naruto, Asia said as she grabbed her briefcase and walked toward the church. She looked at Naruto one more time to speak again, hope we see each other again. Naruto nodded his head to her with a smile and left to go back to the orc building, when he was halfway there, something else stopped him and it was an animal that meowed. The blonde devil turned to his right and saw a black cat with golden eyes was sitting down on the sidewalk and staring at him with interest. Well hello there? Naruto said, crouching down on one knee and held out his right hand. The black cat walked up to him sniffing his hand and started to rub his hand as he started to pet it, making the cat purr as he was hitting the right spots. I see you've already taken a liking to me, he said as he chuckled, but he stopped and got up, not wanting to be late any more than he is. Naruto was about to leave, but the cat meowed again and started to rub against his leg. I see you don't want me to leave you, huh, okay then, it'll take you home since I know mom could use the company when she's alone, Naruto said, making his mind up. The blonde picked up the cat as she notices it was female and need a name. Hum how about Kuro, does that sound good to you? The cat meowed in a walk that let him know that she did like the name. Naruto decide to run back home as fast as he can, first, he knew that he's going to be late to the meeting that Rias is holding right now, when he got back home, his parents saw the cat that Naruto was holding and asked them if he can keep it, with his mother telling him yes and had her husband to go out and get some pet supplies for cats, and also, she could use some company at home as it can be lonely. Small time skip after taking care of things and running back, Naruto finally made it back to the orc building and saw Rias, who wasn't pleased with him of being late. You're late Naruto, Rias said in a tone that demanded an answer. Naruto decided to pull a Kakashi and said, sorry I am late, I saw a black cat cross my path, so I had to take the long way around. Rias eyebrow twitched at this, Akano and Yumi giggled at this, while Kaneko cracked a small smile. Very funny Naruto, but really why were you late? Rias asked. I bumped into a nun and dropped her at the church that's here, on my way back, I found a female black cat, who I named Kuro, and made her into my pet, which is why I am late, Naruto answered. The others heard the word nun and Rias glared at Naruto, making him raised an eyebrow at this. Naruto, I want you stay away from that nun, she's, the enemy of the devils I know Rias, but she's too pure and she won't even harm a fly, besides, that church there, it had a foul and evil presences there, Naruto said, cutting the crimson haired devil off. Because it's a church Naruto, to us it is evil Rias stated. It wasn't the holy power that I felt, it was something else, and I believe that the fallen are hiding there, Naruto said, remembering the church and the feeling he got that made his skin crawl. Rias heard this and thought about this info, if fallen angel got past her the first time by attacking a teenager, Naruto, there's no telling if they will do that again, she will have to talk to Sona about this. I'll go and check in with Sona about this, so we can make plans to attack the church if the fallen are there, but I can deal with that tomorrow as we have a stray to kill, Rias said. Time skip abandoned warehouse night has come and the group of devils were at the warehouse where visor. The stray devil that left her king and turned into a monster that has started to eat humans, Sona gave Naruto the details about this, tell him that the most powerful of strays hold the rank of S to SS and needs an ultimate devil to kill these strays, the blonde had told her that in his world, if anyone has that type of rank then they have a flea on sight order since they are cage or above in power. So, this visor left her king? Naruto said with a groan. This was stupid to the blonde, that they must kill her because she left her king, he won't say they should nt kill her as she is now killing humans and doesn't want any innocents getting got in the crossfire. It has to be done Naruto, it's the punishment to all reincarnated devils and she has been killing humans that brought our attention, Rias said, making a good point and Naruto agreed for now. 
As the group were walking, they smelled the stench of blood and as they got closer a snake-like tail strike at them making them dodge the attack. Well, well, well it's the gremory bitch and her peerage, the stray devil, our visor, said as she walked out and her appearance looked like a centaur but her eyes landed on Naruto and smiled lustfully at him and started to rub her bare breasts. Oh, what a handsome man, maybe I should just kill the sluts and keep you alive so I can ride you all day long and pump your seed into me. Okay that was so weird on so many levels, Naruto said with a deadpanned look and feeling very sick right now. Agreed. Yumi growled before summoning her holy eraser and charged at the stray, who had pissed her off. Naruto decided to stay back and watch on how this is done as he knows what the pieces do thanks to both Rias and Sona, he was impressed by Yumi's speed as she was fast and agile, but she lacks strength in her strikes, the blonde will have to help her out with that as she was trying to copy Emiya, Chloe from the Fate series, due to her powers being almost like theirs. Kaneko was a brawler as she only uses her rook's power and not her chakra or senjutsu, he must fix that problem and find out what happened, maybe a certain black cat can tell him, but he will have to help her out on her reflexes and speed as they were too slow, some weight seals could do the trick. Akano uses her lighting attacks on the stray, Naruto can tell that she's enjoying it way too much. As he saw a small trial of liquid running down her inner thighs. Making his eyebrow twitched, he can tell that both her and Anko will get along just fine as Anko likes making people scream in pain and enjoys it, though unlike the Junin, Akano wasn't experienced enough to keep it from clouding her judgment and give her tunnel vision, she was lucky that she was up against a stray devil, and a pretty weak one at that, since a higher leveled and more experienced opponent would take advantage of this to kill Akano, if she was lucky. But Naruto saw something else and he can tell that Akano was wearing a mask that he knows all too well, as he worn one when he was growing up, it looks like he must find out on what happened to her. The lighting stop and Rias walked up to Visor as she was on the ground with cuts, bruises and burns from the lighting and she glared at the gremory with pure hate. So, any last words Visor? Rias asked as she was charging her power of destruction. You slut, Visor growled, but it soon turned into screams as she was vaporized into ashes. Oops, my hand slip, Rias said with a smirk, Naruto decided to clap his hand at their display, he was kind of impress of their work, but it does have some flaws in them. Impressive. Most impressive indeed, Naruto said before walking away as it was late and spoke, meet you at school tomorrow, Rias. Yumi caught up to him and soon they were walking side by side, going home, Akano walked beside her king, friend. You know that is coming soon Rias, Akano informed. I know Akano and I hope Naruto is strong enough to pull it off, he still hasn't awakened his sacred gear yet, Rias said as she, Akano and Kaneko left the warehouse. Rias may be using Naruto and not care about his well-being. But that's not true, she felt bad on using her friendship she formed with the blonde that has gotten her attention and wants him to be strong to break the marriage off with the asshole. The crimson-haired devil knows her pawn was strong, but his sacred gear hasn't awakened and had feeling that it was powerful like him due to how many pawns it took, she will have to ask Sona and maybe see if they can push something to awaken the power within the blonde, anything can happen, but not now as it was late, and some rest was needed. Time skip Hyodo House Naruto was sitting on his bed petting Kuro as she was enjoying his petting really well and both Yumi and Tsubaki gushed over the cat saying how cute she is making Kuro beam at the praises she was getting. So, tell me Kuro why do you have chakra flowing through you? Naruto asked as he felt the cat stiffen at this and looked at him with wide eyes. HH how did you know NYA? The cat asked in shock. I've felt your chakra when I started to pet you and I also felt your devil powers as well even if you hidden well he stated as he looked at her. So, what's your name? My name is Kuroka, NYA, and I am a SS stray devil that kill her king, the cat or Kuroka said, knowing she was caught, and was afraid that Naruto will rat her out. Naruto sensed this and calmed her down by petting her, he wasn't going to tell anyone as Kuroka was far different than the stray devil he met early. Don't worry I won't tell a soul since I am not like the others, but for now, we'll talk later when we're alone okay, Naruto said calming his new friend down and smiled. Okay, NYA, Kuroka said with a smile and purr some more. Both Yumi and Tsubaki walked into the room wearing nothing but their towels around their bodies showing off their curves, breasts and asses as they had their change of clothes with them, they undo their towels and crawled into his bed, they wanted to start another process of helping him out on getting his powers back and told him to lose the boxers. The two cuddled next to him but he hasn't fallen asleep yet and this worried them. Is something wrong Naruto? Tsubaki asked, thinking about my old home is all, Naruto answered with a small frown, missing some people back in his old home and good number of people as well. 
Yumi looked at him and idea popped into her head, she straddled him and leaned forward to kiss him right on the lips surprise him, his shock was washed away as he saw love and care in the eyes which he somehow gave in and kissed right back, she got off and allowed Tsubaki do the same, she kissed him on the lips and returned to her position right next to him. Naruto decided to ask, okay, what's with the kisses? Yumi snuggled closer to him with a smile but answered him, well for the past two weeks Naruto you've been bonding with us and we started to have feelings for you. So, Yumi and I decided that we would like to be your girlfriends, we know that more will come, and devils can have harems, we also know that you will treat us as equals, so, we are the first in your harem, Tsubaki said with a smile on her face. Naruto thought long and hard on this, he got to know them for two weeks and they really liked his company which he also did as well. He answered, alright, I'll be your boyfriend and you too can be in my harem. The two girls squealed in joy at this as they put their heads down on their now boyfriend chest and the three fallen asleep, Kuroka laid on his stomach and went to sleep as well with a smile on her face. Just another day with our blonde devil hero and more are to come. Within Naruto's dream, shows our blonde hero being surrounded by flames, though instead of harming him, they were guiding him to something or someone that was calling him, this wasn't his first time as during the past two or more weeks of being in this new world, he would dream some odd things and end up with flames surrounding him. Normally, Naruto would wake by now, but this time was different, and he started to meditate in order to find answers, he wanted to know who was calling as it could be Kurama, but he could be wrong as this mindscape was different than the one Kurama resided in, though soon enough, Naruto sensed something approaching him. Bursting out of the flames came a dragon, the dragon was a large red western on with a long neck and green eyes, he also has red and golden spikes throughout his body. Naruto wasn't scared, but in awe at the sight before him, as he read about dragons during his studies on the supernatural and was always found of them very interesting, now he was wondering if this dragon could be the strange calling he's been getting since he enters this world. You have awakened your power and summoned me, partner, very interesting, the red dragon spoke, sounding powerful and yet wise. Who are you? Naruto asked, wondering who this dragon is and why he feels a strong connection to him, like he does with Kurama. I am one of the two heavenly dragon emperors, the red dragon emperor, Diedrig, and you, Naruto Uzumaki, happen to be the next user of boosted gear, the dragon, rather or Diedrig, answered, while having his wings flap open. Naruto felt a great deal of energy within him as green light and flames surround around him, having a dragon-like gauntlet that cover up his right hand and majority of the arm, it has green jewel and a total of ten golden spokes, aside from covering more of his arm, the blonde could now guess that this was his sacred gear that Rias, Sona, and himself were trying to unlock for some time now, now, it was awakened, with him even know its full name. End of mindscape Naruto's eyes immediately snapped open, as he awoke from his dream to see it was morning, deciding to get out of bed, he was careful not to wake up Yumi and Tsubaki as they were still sleeping at his sides, while Kuroka slept on his chest in her cat form, the blonde was careful as he get up and carried the cat into the bathroom for a quick talk. Kuroka meowed with a yawn as she felt the warmth was gone and opened her eyes to see the blonde had taken them to the bathroom. NYA, good morning, Naruto-kun, what's got you all up at this hour, NYA? Kuroka asked as she stretches out and cleans herself for the morning. Morning Kuroka, noting much, just had a dream and want to ask you something, Naruto stated, getting the black cat to look at him in wonder. Kuroka stood quiet and allowed the blonde to ask away. Is it possible for sacred gear user to dream of their gears, and what it is? Naruto asked, wondering about what he dreamt about. Kuroka hummed for a second while licking her paw and thought, remembering something like this question being asked by a friend of hers, it was some time ago, and around that time things were kicking up, like now. It's hard to say as I don't have sacred gear, so I don't know, NYA, however, I know a friend that had the same thing as you, Naruto, NYA. She later found out that she had awakened her sacred gear and I think you have awoken yours, Kuroka answered. I see, thanks Kuroka, that helps a lot and is something I should investigate, Naruto said, looking at his right hand, feeling that strong energy still and wonder more about his sacred gear, the boosted gear. Glad that I can help, NYA, Kuroka said, before purring as Naruto pat her on the head and back, getting her good spots. Naruto smiled as he patted Kuroka and started to get his shower ready, before heading out for school. He will have to inform Rias and Sona about his sacred gear during break or after school, now he needs to get ready. Time skip Kuo Academy after taking a shower, having breakfast, and walking towards school with Yumi and Tsubaki, as Naruto had class with his fellow blonde girlfriend as they shared the same classes, the blonde had taken care of his morning classes which were math, gym, 
and history before heading out to lunch at the student council as he promised Sona for lunch and another game of chess as well. Nothing going on with Orc as it was a slow day for clubs, so there's that and moving on. Naruto saw Rias and her peerage, while Sona had her peerage, but they were all girls as well. Naruto saw Sona at the desk with a chessboard out wanting another match with him, so, he sat in the chair in front of her, but before they can start Kaneko sat on his lap and grabbed his left hand to put it on top on her head as she wants to be petted, this made Yumi pouted, as she wanted to sit on his lap. Naruto began to pet her head as she ate her snack, while starting to play chess with Sona as she made her first move, while playing, Naruto decided to ask both Rias and Sona a question about sacred gears. Hey Rias and Sona, can I ask you both a question? Naruto asked. Sure. Naruto what is the question? Sona asked as she took one of his rooks. Is it possible for someone to talk to their sacred gear in their mindscape? Naruto asked, remembering his encounter with the dragon in his mindscape. Hum that depends. Why you ask? Rias asked well I spoke with my sacred gear this morning, he replied as he took Sona's bishop. You spoke with your gear? Sona questioned. Yeah, he said his name is Diedrig, the red dragon emperor and one of the two heavenly dragons, with the gear being called the boosted gear, Naruto said, before noticing all eyes were on him. Why, you have the red dragon emperor? Rias said in shock. Um yeah I do, why? Naruto asked, seeing his king's look of shock. Naruto, the boosted gear allows the user to power up in 10 seconds for each use, Sona stated. Naruto nodded his head at this, taking the information and still played the game, he soon notices the time, causing him to remember something that Rias might like. Hey Rias, would you like to go to that anime store since I heard that they're having a sale on Fate series stuff? The blonde offered. Rias looked at Naruto with stars in her eyes after hearing Fate series and sale, before answering him, of course I would go with you, but finish your game with Sona first. We can go right now as it's checkmate for me, Naruto said, having his queen in position to take Sona's king. Sona looked at the board with wide eyes and was in deep thought of the blonde's victory. Naruto picked up Kaneko and set her down on his chair as both he and Rias left with Yumi and Tsubaki following. Anime store, afternoon. Let's just say that the group of four were having a good time. Rias was buying her favorite characters from the Fate series. Naruto decided to take Emiya, as they were almost alike, both try their best to be heroes, along with some other Fate, Stay Night stuff, as well. He soon looked at looked at the Gilgamesh figure, but stopped when he felt like someone was watching him. He found nothing and leave it be for now. They all left as Rias went back to the orc building, but she said she had a good time, while Naruto, Yumi and Tsubaki went back home. What they didn't know, was that they were being watched. The said person has fair skin as she wore bracelets and a necklace. She has red tattoos on her body, long blonde hair and crimson eyes with black slits, her outfit was a black shirt that covered only her breasts with her under breasts jutting out from underneath the shirt and her lower body was her golden armor. This woman is Gilgamesh, the queen of heroes. Who had sensed Naruto coming to this world, so, she has been keeping an eye on him with interest, seeing that Naruto has left, she too decided to leave and calling it night. Saturday Saturday has come and some downtime was needed for our blonde hero, Naruto was walking through the park with Yumi and Tsubaki as they wore their off-day clothes, Yumi outfit was something else, my Valentine City Tournament outfit Yu-Gi-Oh! while Tsubaki outfit was something else, high school DXD Tsubaki Shinra goth dress. You can stop following us, Naruto finally said, as he had sensed that someone was following them. The blonde and the girls turn around to see a man wearing casual clothing, he had black hair with golden bangs and black goatee as his eyes were violet, but the noticeable feature on him were his twelve jet black feathered wings on his back showing that he was a fallen. This caused Yumi summon her sword birth and Tsubaki summon her Naginata for a fight, but Naruto didn't summon any of his swords, as he can tell that this man has no evil intent. Ma, ma. No need to get violent, I am here to talk, the fallen angel said. Then why are you here fallen? Yumi growled, to talk that's all, besides your boyfriend seem calm and not hostile at all with me, he said. Both Yumi and Tsubaki glanced at their boyfriend and were shocked that he was calm. So, who are you and what do you want to talk about? Naruto asked the fallen in front of them, crossing his arms and stand calm. My name is Azazel, the leader of the Grigori. I am here to inform you that I didn't give out the order to kill the boy, the fallen angel leader informed. Both Yumi and Tsubaki weren't buying it, but they soon heard their boyfriend spoke, shocking them. Okay, I believe you, Naruto said, seeing the girls were about to protest, rose his hand to silence them and listen to reason. Especially, since you could have attacked us at any time. Yeah, 
My orders were to watch the boy and if there were signs of his sacred gear being active, I would have gave the order to bring him back to the Grigori to be trained in his gear, so he won't harm others, as Azul said, with what he said making good sense. Let me guess, someone went behind your back? Naruto said, given his experience and displeasure of knowing some people in his old life that gained power, or tried to do so, that way. Azazel nodded his head and spoke, yes, quite right, I believe that there's a rouge splinter group, or at least a rouge element, manipulating them, I want Donaseek, Raynair, Middleton and Kalawarner alive if possible, though you can kill the others, use this to summon me, so I can get my answers. Azazel gave Naruto his summon card and flew off, Naruto and the others needed to tell their kings about this, as this was very important information to share, and proceeded to leave the park, what they didn't notice thought, was that on the roof, the queen of heroes herself was watching them again, but she wasn't the only person. Floating up in the sky was another fallen with twelve wings on her back. She has long black hair with a tint of blue in them and black eyes. Her body figure was the same as Akino's, as she wore tight demi jeans. Black shoes, a red shirt that strain against her breasts and a black jacket. This girl is Satsuki Uchiha, or as people like to call her, Mini Makoto as she looks a lot like her mother, she was brought here just like Naruto, after she killed Zetsu, right before he used Kamui on her also, but what was different in her case, was that both her body and soul arriving in this world, intact, when she woke up, she was in a bed with Azazel sitting in a chair next to her, watching her, which was little creepy. The fallen told the black-haired woman who he is and showed his wings, he told her that he brought her back to life with a prototype piece that he only managed to make one of and use it to make her into a fallen angel. With no way home and finding a new home in the Grigori, Satsuki trained in her new powers and became one of the most powerful fallen angels in the faction, sometime later, she heard that there was a person named Naruto, and had to find out if this person was the one, she knew, so here she is, watching the person that she loved, but couldn't confess her feelings to as he and the two girls with him disappeared in a summon circle. Naruto, I am glad that you're alright, and maybe I can finally confess my feelings to you, but I might have to share it with those two and more, it won't matter since polygamy is legal in the elemental nations, and you will love us all equally, Satsuki thought with a smile on her face, before flying away into the night sky and return back to base. Time skip it was now night as Naruto has another contract with another person. The blonde, Yumi and Tsubaki informed both Rias and Sona about their meeting with the leader of the Grigori. They told them that there could be a splinter group, or a Rouge member, that is controlling the group here in Kuo, Rias and Sona made sure to inform their sisters about the problem and what course of action shall they take, of course, they can attack the splinter group, but some might use that to start a war due to most not knowing about the rogues, so, there was that, but let's get back to our blonde hero. Now we see Naruto doing some of his contracts he was called for at this late hour. Naruto knocked on the door, but no one answered, he tried the door and to his shock, it was open. This also made him frown as he made his way in and noticed the smell of blood in the room. Naruto finally walked into the living room and noticed bodies in the room as they were butchered, with one hung on the wall, but the blonde also sensed someone in the room. Well, 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 what do we have here, a shitty little devil? A crazed man said as he walked out of the shadows. Naruto took note that the man was a priest but knew that this person wasn't from the church as they would have kicked him out of his ways. Did you do this? Naruto growled. Why yes, I did, as these shitty devil worshippers needed to die in the name of God, he said with a crazed look and smile. And my name is Freed Selzen and your end. Freed made a light sword and charged at Naruto, who dodged his attack, with the insane priest trying again. Naruto kept on dodging, but soon stopped when they heard a female gasp. Naruto saw Asia standing at the stairs with her eyes widen. Asia. Naruto muttered, Naruto. Asia said in surprise. You two know each other. Freed said, Yeah we do, but I have something for you, Naruto said. And what's that? He asked, Sukuyomi. Naruto said with his eternal Mangekyo Sharingan active. Freed stared at the eyes and was trapped in Genjutsu, leaving him wide open. Naruto summoned his Kusanagi and took his head off with one swing of his sword making Asia gasp in shock at this. Naruto saw her look, but he also sensed something else coming, so he picked her up like a princess, making her go eep, she blushed as the blonde devil took off to the orc building, he didn't care if Rias yelled at him, as he want leave someone behind. Orc building Naruto was back at the orc building with Rias to her peerage and Sona to her peerage, when the blonde got back, they noticed him barging in the room with the nun in his arms. Rias chewed him out for this, but he didn't care as he told her that he had to kill a crazy priest and felt the fallen coming, so, bringing Asia here was the safest bet. 
Asia was first shocked when she found out that Naruto and the girls in the room were devils, but Naruto told her that she won't be harm and Asia took it very well, she got to know them and in Naruto's eyes, she doesn't judge a book by its cover, she decided to tell them about her life in the church and was kicked out of the church, while being was labeled as a witch after she healed a devil. Naruto was pissed at this as this brought up his old memories during his childhood, but he pushes that down and comfort Asia, he told her that he was her friend, making the said girl happy and hugged him. Naruto asked Rias to make her into a devil so she can make new friends, Rias at first was against it, but after what she heard from Asia, she agreed as her sacred gear, the twilight healing, could be a good in her peerage and made the former nun into her last bishop. A red summon circle soon appeared in the room and out came a man that Rias knew very well, and it was her older sister's pawn, Beowulf. Beowulf. What brings you here? Rias asked. I am here to inform you that your sisters have given okay to capture the four that were mentioned and kill the rest of them, the dual wielding pawn said. It won't matter as they're already here, Naruto said, as he walked out the room, outside. The others followed him out and saw a large group of fallen and stray priests outside. Give us the nun, now. Donisik demanded. Naruto looked at him with a bored expression and saw Rainer there, as well, he also saw the other two, a long blue hair girl wearing a revealing red outfit as that must be Kalawarner, and the other must be Middle, given the information he got from the leader of the fallen angels. Sorry, but we can't as she's now a devil under Rios care, Naruto said, with this serving to piss Donisik piss off. But I was told to keep you four alive, so, do me a favor and sleep. Naruto used his eyes again on the four and they passed out, with that done, Naruto proceeded to turn towards the other fallen angels and stray priests that were there, but before he and the others could move an inch, golden portals appeared above them as a ton load of weapons dropped down on them as they were cut to pieces. When it was over, only pieces of them were left, as Rias and the others, sans for Naruto and Beowulf, were green in the face, while Asia fainted at the sight, seeing that the situation was taken care of for them, Naruto asked his king to put binding spells on the four fallen as he contacted Azazel. Orc building what the just happened? Middleton asked, being the first to wake up. I don't know, but that blonde's eyes must have done something, Rainer stated. But is it me, or is that blonde haired boy with the whisker marks hot? Warner wondered, as she blinks her eyes a couple of times. Good, you're awake, now the four of you can start explaining yourselves, a familiar male voice said. The four looked towards the direction that the voice came from, and saw Azazel, with the devils there as well. Azazel was glaring at them, making the three girls shake at this. I am going to ask one question is that why did you disobey my orders? Azazel asked. We didn't disobey your orders Lord Azazel? Rainer said. Yes, you did, my orders were to watch the boy and if he showed signs of his sacred gear coming to life, you are to bring him to Grigori so he can be trained to use it, he stated. But Donisik said you change them, Middleton said. Your orders were to kill the boy as he was a threat to the Grigori, Warner said. I didn't give out any orders like that. Azazel said as he turned to look at Donisik, while the said fallen was paling in fear. The fallen angel thought for a moment and soon realized, with him saying, but I know who did. Azazel walked right up to Donisik, before picking him up by his collar and glaring at the fool. Tell me, did Kokabiel give you those orders? Azazel said, but Donisik didn't say anything, causing Azazel to punch him. Answer me right, now, yes, he did as he saw the boy as a threat to his plans to start a new war. Donisik said as he spat blood at his former boss' feet, but soon heard Naruto's chuckled. What so funny brat? Issei wasn't a threat to his plans, he most likely would have lived the rest of his life ignorant of the supernatural world if you didn't take such drastic actions, but when Rainer killed the boy, his spirit went on to the afterlife with me taking the boy's place, and I am a far bigger threat to Kokabiel since I have maybe another two weeks before I return to the level of power I was at in my old world, Naruto said. Old world? Donisik asked. Yes, where I am from, humans can use chakra, have special eyes and other things, but the kicker is that me and Satsuki fought and beat a primordial goddess, she was our ancestor and more powerful than any being here in this world, Naruto said. Azazel smirked at this, this boy, and the girl he mentions, could be a huge help for this world, he had killed Donisik with a holy spear to the heart, before thinking on what to do with the other three. Now what to do with you three? Azazel wondered as he rubbed his chin. Please forgive us Lord Azazel, we didn't know, the three said in unison. I know a good punishment for them, Naruto said, making Azazel and the others look at him. These three have to go to school here, Rainer and Middleton can be students, while Kalawarner can be a teacher, he offered, and it was fair as he wasn't one to deal out punishment to someone who wasn't at fault. 
Oh, I love that idea, but I would like another student to come and watch over them just in case. Do you have a problem with that devil princess? Azazel asked. Not at all, Lord Azazel. I'll go fill out the paperwork for them, Sona said. Perfect. See you around, kid. Azazel waved as he disappears in his circle. This Monday, things will get more far interesting as the devils now will have to share the school with fallen angels now. Yep, very interesting. Kuo Academy Monday, morning. It is Monday morning and Naruto sitting in his classroom with Yumi sitting down next to him. Asia is really liking her new life in the school and moved in with him at his place. Later, the three fallen as well, making the blonde face fault at this as he was getting more girls in his house. Here we go again and now more news. All right everyone, sit down, the female teacher said as the other students did. Today, we have a new student joining us. I hope it's a hot girl with a nice pair of breasts and ass, a male student said, with other males agreeing. I hope it's another cute boy and not a pervert, a female student said. Okay you may come in, the teacher said, allowing the new student to walk in. The new student walked in as the girls gasp at her beauty even when she's wearing the girls uniform as the boys were cheering on for another hot girl, but Naruto's eyes widen as he knew who she is, and so did Yumi as well, after all, Naruto had told her stories about his best friend, rival. Hello everyone, I am Satsuki Uchiha and today I am your new student pleased to meet you all, she greeted with a small bowl with her eyes landing on Naruto to which she smiled at him fondly and spoke, and it's good to see you too, Naruto. Naruto was staring at his secret crush, rival, and muttered her name, Satsuki? Yep, just another day at school, it has been one week since the whole Rouge group events and fallen angels joining Kuo with an old friend showing up. And to say, things have gotten interesting for our blonde hero as he and Satsuki were catching up, Satsuki met both Yumi and Tsubaki and she knew that they were dating Naruto and living with him so she decided to move with them with Asia and the fallen angels and moved into his room, Naruto got along with the three female fallens that were living with him as he has gotten to know each one of them. Naruto is also spoken with Kuroka as to why she was astray. To begin with, she told her side of the story as her king was jealous of her as she surpassed him in power and he wanted to have that power as well so he targeted her younger sister Sharon or he knew of her Kaneko. Rias Rook this made Naruto believe why Kaneko asked why he was carefree and calm when he has Charka and Senjutsu, her king wanted to take the Charka out of her younger sister and the process would have killed her but she had no other choice to kill him marking her an SS stray devil. She couldn't take her little sister with her as she to be a criminal as well and Naruto knew that Itachi did the same thing in his world protecting his little sister as his clan was about to do a coup so he killed off his whole clan. But he got pissed at the devil elders as they ordered to wipe out the entire Nekomata race out of fear but he wouldn't talk as his clan was wiped out due to fear but that was thanks to Danzo and his two stooges that had a hand in it, maybe both Naruto and Satsuki can help the two bond back again. Satsuki got along with the other sans for Akano as she glared at Satsuki and the three fallen when they visit the orc building, now here they were as it was after school with Naruto sitting down on the couch with Kaneko sitting down on his lap as he was petting her head with Yumi sitting down by his left and Satsuki on his right, Rainer, Middlet, and Kalawarner were in the room as both Rainer and Middlet doing homework with Asia while Kalawarner doing paperwork. Rias was acting strangely but Naruto couldn't figure out why. Akano was behind her slightly glaring at the four fallen in the room, Sona, Tsubaki, and her peerage entered the room and Naruto gave a two-finger salute as the female members shyly waved at him making Satsuki smirking at them knowing they have feelings for him as well. Sona what are you doing here? Rias asked did you forgotten that it was time to head to the familiar forest, Sona said. Oh, right I have forgotten that, Rias said, um, what's the familiar forest? Asia questioned in confusion. It's a place where we get our familiars, Yumi said. Yes and I was going to make both you and Naruto there, Rias said. Actually I was going to take my peerage there, Sona said. Then why don't you take both peerages? Naruto said. He can only take one at a time Naruto, Sona said. Can you just ask him to take two? He replied, well, he's kind of a pervert, Tsubaki said. We now I might have something for him, Naruto said. They looked at him with raised eyebrows and Satsuki sighing at this knowing what Naruto is going to do, but she notices a blonde haired boy with grey eyes approaching her. Hey there Satsuki do you want to hang out, the boy said. No, Satsuki stated as she denied him, and I already have a boyfriend. What? And who is he, he said as she pointed at Naruto, him. Yes, his brat is I date strong people, she said. Oh come on he might take like one pawn as it took four to turn me into a devil, he said but Sona slapped him in the back of his head. Enough Saji Genshiru as Naruto took eight pawns to be brought back, 
and both he and Satsuki are even more powerful, Sona said. The now boy named Saji looked at Naruto and then at Satsuki but Sona looked at Naruto in question as he might get the familiar master to get all of them. Naruto you said you might get the familiar master to take all of us? She said. Oh yeah if he's a pervert then I got the perfect thing for him, he said as he was smirking. Both Rias and Sona looked at each other then at him and nodded their heads and made a patrol to the forest as they walked in the patrol and entered the familiar forest as the sky was red and the tree was bare. You gotta catch them all, a male voice said, they all turn and saw the familiar master up in a tree looking at them as he jumped down, I am the familiar master of the familiar forest. It's nice to meet you as we're here to have our new members to get their familiars, Rias said. You know that I only allow one at a time, he said. Actually my pawn has something that might let this slide for once, Rias said. Naruto summoned some orange books saying Icha Icha on them making Satsuki sighing at this as the master took one book and flipped through the pages and he started to giggle like a pervert. Okay, it'll take you both, he said as he put the books away. The group was walking through the forest as their new members looking for their familiars which they got as Asia got a sprite dragon as she calls it Rase as it killed a smill that was eating the girl's clothing off but both Naruto and Satsuki notices that they were being watched from afar. You three can come out now as we know that you're following us, Naruto said as he and Satsuki looked at the forest. On cue a yellow bipedal fox along with three bipedal cats one was white, the other was black and the other looks like an Egyptian cat and a woman that looked like a human hybrid and another looking like a human wearing a reveling outfit with fairy wings on her back and the others look like plant-like hybrid girls as they came out of the tree line. Is there a reason why you were following us and staring at me and Satsuki so much? He said. Well for one eye, Ranamon, Lilimon, and Kazimon are interested in you while these four are interested in the girl next to you, the fox said as it was female. It's strange that you eight will appear right now as you eight never wanted masters in the first place, the familiar master said. Well, we saw them worthier for us to be our master, the white cat said as it was female as well. Both Naruto and Satsuki looked at each then at them and nodded their heads at this as this is the first for a fallen to get four familiars and a devil getting four familiars. What are your names? Naruto asks them, the fox, the hybrids went toward Naruto and knelt before him and the fox spoke first, my name is Renamon. The name is Kazimon, the fairy said, and I am Lilimon, the other hybrid said. My name Ranamon Shuga and I hope we get to know each other a lot, the hybrid said as she winks at him. My name is Gadaman and these are my sisters, Black Gadaman and Mikeman, the white cat said. My name is Lilimon, the other hybrid said, both Naruto and Satsuki did the ritual as Naruto got Ranamon. Ranamon, Kazimon, and Lilimon while Satsuki got Gadaman, her sisters, and Lilimon. They ended their day and they went back home and call it a night as Naruto was sleeping with both Yumi and Tsubaki sleeping by his sides and with his new roommate Satsuki laying on his chest naked as they were born, but their sleep was disturbed when the Gremory clan symbol appeared on the floor as Rias appeared in her panties and her school shirt open. Naruto, I need you to take my virginity, Rias said as she jumped him. Naruto pushes her off, what the hell Rias? What is wrong with you? Nothing's wrong Naruto as I want you to take my virginity, she said. No Rias as there is something wrong with you, he replied. Before Rias said anything another Gremory symbol appeared and a maid appeared from it with silver hair and silver eyes, this is Grafia Lucifuge and Serena's powerful queen. Rias thanked the Satans that I have appeared in time as I can't believe that you will give your virginity to low life, Grafia said. Low life now wait a damn minute lady, Naruto said. Grafia looked at him with a blank look and spoke, be quiet low life. This pissed Naruto off and used his speed and appeared in front of Grafia shocking her as he shoved his right fist in her gut making go wide eyes and knock her out cold, Naruto then looked at his bed as Rias, Yumi and Tsubaki's eyes were widened and their jaws were dropped. What? He said, you just knock out my older sister's strongest queen in one punch, Rias said. She doesn't look strong to me Rias, he said as he used his magic to take Grafia back to the underworld and he looked at Rias, okay, what is going on? He was confused at this and so was Satsuki as Rias didn't want to talk but Yumi had enough of this and decided to speak. Rias please tell him now as he needs to know, she said. Rias sighed at this and told Naruto that she was put in a forced marriage with a east pig named Riser Fenex and both her father and Riser's father agreed to it, Naruto asked her that she tried to get off it and told them that she didn't like him which she told him that it was the good of the clan, then he asked her if her older sister can try which she told her that Serena can't interfere as she was the leader and it will sow favoritism in the elder devils mostly have all the power. 
This made Naruto piss at these old fools as he remembers back in his world that the elders in the council and the civilian councils took all the power when his father died and the old man took the hat again. But when the third died his godmother took the hat as she was trying to take the power back and when she woke up from her coma when Danzo died when Satsuki killed him and she took all the power away from them as she got all the evidence from the deceased war hawk and had them all arrested for all the dirt they did when the third was in power, his father when he died and when the third took the hat again. Naruto sighs at this but decided to speak, well we can deal with this idiot tomorrow and since you're here you can stay here. Ria smiled at this as there could be hope for her yet as Naruto got back into bed as she and Satsuki shared his chest for the next morning. Meanwhile, Gilgamesh was watching from the distance as it will be her time to appear from the world again and to test this outsider in battle as he will be her future king like her friend, lover Enkidu told her, but she wasn't the only one was incredibly beautiful women with very long silk-like blonde hair that almost touches the floor, gold eyes, very large breasts, and a very buxom figure as she wore a black dress. This is Cassandra Fenex, Cassandra Aoi from Freezing, Riser twin sister, Ruval Fenex younger sister and Ravel big sister as she became interested in Rhea's new pawn and hates her twin but one thing is that she has golden flames as they were powerful than her parents and siblings as some say that they belong to the phoenix bird itself as they call her the phoenix queen in the underworld, well, she will meet the boy tomorrow at the meeting as her mother told her to supervise the meeting. Well, the next day will be very interesting tomorrow. Naruto, Satsuki, Rias, Yumi, and the rest of her peerage was in the orc building as Naruto noticed Grafia was in the room as he saw her looking at him with a small tint of pink on her cheeks as she looked at him, she was giving him with submission and lust as everyone sat down or lean against the wall. Um. Rias why are we here for? Asia asked her king. Rias was about to say something she saw an orange symbol of a bird on the floor which she frowns at. Fenex Yumi growled as she hated this man. Then a young man in his early twenties with short blonde hair and dark blue eyes was wearing a burgundy blazer with gold embroidery on the right with matching pants and black dress shoes. Underneath his open blazer is a white dress shirt that is not fully buttoned just one button short, giving a slight view to his chest, both Naruto and Satsuki can tell this man was riser as he was giving off an air of arrogance around him when he appeared in the room and they saw the look on the girls' faces as they can tell they despise the man as well. Ah, it's been a while I been in the human world. The man said then he saw Rias and smiled. Rias my love. Rias growled at this but before she can say anything a golden symbol of a bird on the floor as golden flames came out of it which Rias eyes widen at this while Riser growled at this as Cassandra Fenex came out of the portal. Lady Cassandra. What are you doing here? Grafia asked the Fenex heiress. Cassandra looked at Grafia with a stoic look. I am here to make sure this meeting goes smoothly, she said as she looked at Riser. This is an order by our mother as well. Riser just grunted as he curses his mother for this. Same as canon. Now I can see why Rias and the others hate this man, Naruto thought. As both he and Satsuki watched both Rias and Riser arguing with each other that's when Riser threatens Rias' peerage but was stopped by Cassandra as she released some of her killer intent to shut up Riser which works as the two notices the sweat that was coming out of him, the Riser notices Satsuki and gave her a lustful look which disgusts her as she notices him walking toward her. Now what's a lovely lady like you doing here, Riser said. He then cupped her chin and slightly raised her head a little to stare into her eyes, but Satsuki looked at him with a boring look which Naruto mentally smirked at this. Oh, Riser you add up as Satsuki only wants me to touch her like that, Naruto thought. This lovely lady will take something that makes you a man if you get your filthy hands off me, Satsuki told the prick. Oh, my you're feisty I like girls that are feisty, Riser stated. But then he felt the heat between his legs as he looked down and saw a light spear between his legs as he felt heat by his neck and his sides as Rainer and Middle were on his sides as Kalawarna was behind him as he saw the black wings on their backs as they were fallen, then he looked and saw Satsuki as his eyes widen as he saw her twelve black wings behind her back. Fallen? What are you doing here? He asked, we go to school here is that a crime as the devils and fallen have a truce, so now get your ass back to your spot and be a good little boy, she said. Brother. Do what she says, or I will force you to, Cassandra order. Satsuki and the other fallen moved their light spears away as Riser left and sat back down as he glares at her with hate. Satsuki was proud of Rainer, Middelt, and Kalawarna actions as they came right in the door and saw Riser close to Satsuki, they quickly went into action but with everything over she decided to walk over to Naruto and sat on his lap as she is grinding her ass until she felt him member growing and now between her butt cheeks which got both Yumi and Kaneko glare at her for taking their spot but Riser snort at this. A fallen loving a devil, how disgusting, Riser said. Satsuki rolled her eyes at this, please we were once human before we turn, 
and I know Naruto when we were kids and on his 16th birthday and I was his present, and you can guess where that leads to which was all day long, Satsuki said. Then she put her thumb between her fingers which every woman in the room blush at this meaning as they rub their legs at the thought of Naruto ing them like that but now, he's a devil that upped his stamina greatly, but they heard Satsuki spoke that made them get a nosebleed. Oh, and he's packing as well as it is 14 inches with a two and a half grit that will make you feel that you're breaking in half in a good way, Satsuki said. That made Yumi blush more as she saw Naruto's member a lot as she plays with herself in the shower thinking of Naruto's sword piercing her with Tsubaki joining in on the fun in the shower, the meeting wasn't going anywhere as Rias kept saying she want Mary Riser as to Riser kept on saying that pure devils need to keep their numbers up as they were a dying race after the great war and civil war that they had but this made Naruto scoffed at this which got everyone's attention. Is there something you want to say a lower class? Riser demanded. Naruto just ignores Riser's trash talk which pisses him off a little. You say that the devil's number are getting lower, but I call bullshit as you have the evil peace system which increase your numbers a lot and still is going up and what is this part where both yours and Rias child that will inherit both the power of destruction and the Fenex flames? That won't happen as the said child will be born with one of the two and not both, Naruto explains, stated. Both Cassandra and Grafia both smile at this as he was right about everything he said as Riser was about to say something but a look from his twin sister shut him up as he knows that she is powerful than him and their older brother but Grafia knew that this wasn't going anywhere so she has another idea to solve this problem. Then the only way to solve this problem is through a rating game, Grafia told the two. This made Riser smirk at this but when he saw Rhea smirking right back at him which made him confuse at this as well. Tell me Rhea, is this your entire peerage? Riser asked her. Yes, why? Rias told him, so, you only have five pieces in your peerage, he said. Then Riser snapped his fingers as his clan symbol appeared and out came fifteen women came out of it which surprise everyone san for Naruto and Satsuki as they can tell that they were weak, but they notice a girl with the same hair color and eye color, and they decide that that young girl is both Riser and Cassandra's sister as they can tell the look of disappointment in her eyes when they saw her looking at the young girl. A complete set. Yumi mutter as she knew that wasn't good. But I have a complete set Rias, he said, both Naruto and Satsuki laugh at this which got the others confused about why they are laughing. Oh god, they're weak as, Naruto told Satsuki this made Riser, the younger blonde and Riser peerage glare at the pawn while Cassandra smirk at this as he was right about Riser peerage. No kidding Naruto, Satsuki replied to him in her giggles. Now Riser and his peerage glared at her and having enough as Riser look at his pawn that was a young girl with blue hair and light brown eyes as she was wearing a white haori with a red obi which is worn under a red happy coat she wore bandages on her forearms and shins as she has black guards over her hands as her footwear was a pair of zoris. This is Mira and was she was a pawn in Riser peerage. Mira silences these two, he orders her, yes, master, Mira said. Then she got her bow staff ready as she charges the two, but Cassandra was way ahead of this. Kakao and Mayusai Cassandra said, then a golden portal appeared as a woman around 18 years old as she has long black jet black hair. Crystal blue eyes, as she was wearing an all white tunic as well as a white no lace high heeled boots as she was red gloves as she has a wire in her hands. This was Kakao and Mayusai and Cassandra Pawn, Kakao and intercepted Mira as she kicked the young girl in her gut making Mira lost the wind in her gut as she dropped her bow staff but Kakao and wasn't done as she used her wire and strangled the young girl surprising everyone sans for Naruto and Satsuki as they were impressed by Kakao and speed and reaction time. My dear brother this will stop at once and stand down or your pawn will lose her head, Cassandra demanded. Riser growl at this but nodded his head which Cassandra looked at Kakaoan which the said black haired woman let her wire loose making Mira gasping for air but Kakaoan grabbed Mira happy and threw her to her peerage which a girl wearing a navy blue kipau with blue accents, a white sash around her stomach and his black low heeled shoes as she has black hair and blue green eyes as she has two buns. This is Shwalan and Riser Rook, the said girl glare at Kakaoan which Kakaoan ignore as she walked toward her king and stood behind her with a blank look on her face which got both Naruto and Satsuki to look at her. Child soldier the two thought, you have 10 days Rias to train you peerage, Riser said. Actually, my dear brother let's add something more interesting to the rating game, Cassandra said. Oh, and what is that? Riser asked her, if you win you still marry Rias, but if you lose you give your peerage to our younger sister Ravel, she explained told him. Huh. Ravel said, Riser growled at this but nodded his head at this. Fine it's a deal, but I won't lose, Riser said, with that, he and his peerage left making Cassandra sigh at this as she stood up and walked to the area where Riser left as Kakao and followed. 
I wish you luck Rias, Cassandra said, the two left as well as Rias release a sigh she held in for a long time. I will tell Lady Lucifer about this, Grafia told Rias. With that Grafia left as well, well now that went well, Naruto said. Yeah, no kidding, Satsuki said, we will use the Gremory's mansion that is in the mountains to train tomorrow, Rias told them. Satsuki stretches her arms a bit but sighed in disappointment as she got up from Naruto's lap. Well Naruto we can put on hold as you need training with your eyes and I am the one that can help you with and I might help you both out as well Yumi and Kaneko, Satsuki said. What do you mean by that? Yumi asked in confusion. Even Kaneko looked at Satsuki confused as well, your eternal problems if you know what I mean, Satsuki explained. This got Rias, Akano, Kaneko, and Yumi's eyes widen at this as Satsuki knew about their problems as they watched both her and Naruto leaving the room. Time skip Gremory's mansion in the mountain area was the Gremory mansion we see Rias and her peerage standing at the front of the mansion but both Satsuki and Tsubaki were with them as Tsubaki wanted to go as she wanted to be with her boyfriend and to train which Sona agreed with as Satsuki left Rainer, Middle and Kalawarna back at Kuo to keep an eye on things. Okay everyone well take our rooms and we'll start our training today, Rias ordered. They nodded their heads at this which they all went inside the mansion but when Naruto got to his room Satsuki, Yumi and Tsubaki put their stuff in his room as they were sharing his room together, when they started both Naruto and Satsuki were together as Satsuki needed to help him as they left clones to help the others with their training and problems. Satsuki and Yumi Satsuki was with Yumi as Satsuki was training the said blonde knight on her strength as her speed is useful, but her strength is lacking. Satsuki blocked one of Yumi's attacks and the Uchiha heiress was right about Yumi problem as she felt a lot of hatred in her attacks, but it was faint, but it was there so she knocks Yumi's sword out of her hand and Spartan kicked the girl in the gut making Yumi landed on her ass as the said girl was breathing heavy. Your attacks are good but I sense hatred in you as well, Satsuki told the knight. Yumi flinched at this and looked away, what are you talking about? Yumi muttered quietly. Satsuki narrow her eyes at Yumi. I know about the holy sword project from Azazel, Satsuki said. Yumi stiffens at this, he told me all about how Valpier Galilei took young kids and turned them into lab rats and see can use the pieces of the Escalibur and get rid of the others when the experiment failed on them, Satsuki explains to Yumi. To her, this Valpier is just like Orochimaru in her world for his sick experiments to find immortality and getting one's bloodlines as she heard Yumi growling at her. Don't you growl at me as destroying the Excaliburs won't bring your friends back? Satsuki stated. Yumi got up and glared at her, I won't stop until I destroy those swords, Yumi demanded. And want to become a stray devil to do it, Satsuki snapped. And what about you as you became a missing nin just to kill your older brother, Yumi counter. Satsuki tisk at this, that was because I hated him and until the day, I killed him Obito found me and told me the truth about what happened to my clan, but I knew what he was doing as he wanted me to hate Konoha for the death of my clan. But I pretended to trick him as it was time for me to go after the man that was responsible for my and Naruto's clan's deaths and killed him and you can do the same to Valpier as he was the cause of your suffering, Satsuki explained as she calms down a bit. But I had Naruto there for me and without him, I would have been lost in the darkness and you won't be lost in your own darkness as you have friends to help you to pull you out of your darkness, and if you don't believe me, you can ask your bi UAL girlfriend. Satsuki pointed behind Yumi which she turns around and saw Tsubaki standing by a tree watching the whole thing as she walked right up to Yumi and gave her a kiss on her lips and stop. She's right Yumi as you have me, Naruto, and everyone else to help you and she is right you should go after the man that did this to you and your friends, Tsubaki said. Yumi sigh but smile, thank you, Yumi said, then Yumi kissed Tsubaki on the lips again when it became a full blown make out session as Yumi pushed Tsubaki down on the ground as they started grinding against each other which Satsuki chuckled at this as she was getting turned on, but it had to stop as she coughed in her hand to get their attention which it helped as they looked at her. As much I want you two to continue your fun, but we have the training to do, she said. But can we stop the training for one day and go to you the real you and Naruto for fun as both me and Tsubaki want to take up to the next level, Yumi said. That's right Satsuki as we want the same experience that you felt, Tsubaki commented. No, Satsuki said, please, both Yumi and Tsubaki said together, you can have him you both after you defeat Mr. KFC agreed, Satsuki told them, both Yumi and Tsubaki looked at each other and nodded their heads and looked back at Satsuki, deal, the two said together good but right now back to training, Satsuki said, the two got up as they resume their training as Yumi wants to be stronger and has a new drive as she and the rest of her peerage has 10 days to get ready thanks for watching.